искам да започваме тази конференция с едно голямо благодаря на Урсула фон дер Лайен за нейното присъствие днес и за предаването на плана за възстановяване и развитие, който вече е финализиран. С този план, който е с размер над 12 милиарда лева, е близо 10% от нашата економика. Той дава наистина възможност България да се трансформира, да си гарантираме енергийната сигурност, намалявайки с тази последна промяна зависимостта от природен газ, да използваме най-новите технологии за нашата енергийна система, да отключим потенциала на България за геотермали, да използваме нашите минерални води за производство на енергия, да реформираме върховенството на закона чрез засилен контрол върху главния прокурор с назначаването на съдя, който временно може да стане и разследващ прокурор и след това да се върне обратно като съдя. Да реформираме антикорупционната комисия, която наистина да започне да работи. Да реформираме начина по който провеждаме обществените си поръчки. Да фокусираме върху българските железници като основен начин за транспорт, като инвестираме в над 62 над 60 нови влака, 62 нови влака и нови градски железници. Да инвестираме в образованието, да инвестираме в нови центрове за наука, технология, инженерство и математика. Да модернизираме образователната инфраструктура, да реформираме предучилищното и училищното образование. Нови инвестиции в изследвания и инновации. Да инвестираме над 1 милиард и 300 милиона в економическа трансформация. Да помогнем на нови стартиращи иновативни компании да стартират в България. Да подкрепиме съществуващите да се модернизират. Този план е работещ, иновативен и наистина ще финансира промяната в България. Благодаря. Сега искам да дам думата на госпожа фон дер Лайен. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prime Minister. Dear Kirill, thank you for the very warm welcome. Um, this is the start of the day here. I'm very much looking forward to uh, our visit uh, at the University of Sofia. And I know that at this university, this is the place where Bulgaria's excellence is shining. And we've been speaking a lot, the two of us, on the need to combine the scientific excellence um, with the business sector to develop products that then can really deliver market value. Um, and I know that there are projects that are outstanding, innovative, concrete projects, for example, the satellite technology, where we have a lot of expectations in. Such innovation is instrumental to keep our economy and our society resilient and competitive. So I'm very much looking forward to see innovation made in Europe. And uh, this is innovation that is homegrown. It is for secure technologies, for example. So an invaluable asset in a more and more turbulent world. This, of course, requires investment. And this is why we're here today. Next Generation EU, our big recovery plan, worth 800 billion euros that we put up to modernize and reshape our continent for the future generations after the pandemic. Now, with Next Generation EU, we have three priorities. The one is the European Green Deal, very dominant at the moment being the topic of clean energy, of course, because it's not only clean energy, but also secure energy, independent energy, good for the climate, but also good for our independence. The second topic is the digitalization, and the third topic we are investing in is equipping our societies to be stronger and to be more resilient. So today, 
the European Commission is giving its green light to Bulgaria's recovery and resilience plan. It is an outstanding plan. Almost 60% of the plan supports the green transition. This is significant and, of course, it is most welcome because we need Bulgaria on board on the road towards climate neutrality in the European Union. And if I may uh, quote a few examples for the substance that is in this plan under the umbrella of the European Green Deal, it's, for example, decarbonizing power generation with binding caps on emissions from coal. It is scaling up renewables and energy storage, very important topic. It's reforming the electricity market, investment in smart grids, and we all know in these times how important that is. It is investing um, in increased interconnections with Romania and Greece, very important too, to diversify the energy supply that uh, we have, so not to be any more dependent on Russian coal, gas, and oil, but to diversify towards reliable suppliers. And almost 1 billion euro goes for energy renovation and large investments in clean mobility, including electric cars. So you see from the examples, this is outstanding. The second topic is the digital transition. Here the plan uh, makes sure that public services are more accessible and more efficient through digitalization. Uh, the plan makes sure that there's a connection throughout the country with the expansion of high-speed internet in rural areas. And it creates the right conditions for the develop development of 5G. This is so important, really, to have the whole country connected, digitalized. You know that this is one of the core topics for the future. And almost 450 million euros will focus on equipping, uh, equipping Bulgarian students and Bulgarian workers with the right digital skills for the jobs of the future. Thus, the Bulgarian plan meets the very demanding conditions and criteria we have jointly established. So it combines investment for the green and digital transition with reforms for, um, of structural challenges that we have. One hallmark is the strengthening of the minimum income scheme um, and the support to the most vulnerable. I think this is also a very important topic. Or it addresses, um, the plan addresses the shortages in healthcare professionals across the country. With the pandemic, we have learned how important it is to have these frontline workers. And it creates stronger institutions with broad anti-corruption measures, you mentioned it. And I personally am very glad um, to see in this plan that you also put a focus on children, children's access to education, so the possibility for four years old and uh, older children to have preschool education is something which is defining their future life, the access to education. Our approval today is an important milestone towards the disbursement, indeed, of 6.3 billion euros over the next years. This is 10% of the GDP. But I would say this is by no means the end of a journey. It's the beginning of a journey. There's a lot of good work ahead of us. And of course, the, Europe, the Commission stands ready always to support. But before I hand you the Commission's assessment, allow me to thank you and to thank the Bulgarian people for your outstanding generosity towards the Ukrainian people that are fleeing the war in Ukraine. You have welcomed more than 130,000 refugees in your country. Many of them are staying. And with no certainty on the end of the conflict, it is important that we mobilize all our efforts to help the refugees and to help the internally displaced. You know that we have flexibilized European funds so that they are immediately accessible for you to cover expenditures, expenditures for the refugees. 
There's another step we will take with the um, online pledging event that we call Stand Up for Ukraine. I convened it together with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau of Canada, and it will take place in Warsaw this Saturday. We want to rally the world to pledge for Ukrainian refugees in Ukraine and outside Ukraine. And I know I can count on Bulgaria's contribution to this global solidarity effort. You do a lot here in Bulgaria, and I want it to be honored. So, with no further ado, I'll hand over the Commission's assessment for Bulgaria's next generation EU plan. For you, Prime Minister. Thank you so much. Yes. Основните критики в месеците назад бяха в сферата на енергетиката и в сферата върховенството на закона, ако можем така да го обобщим. Можем ли да кажем, че в енергетиката всичко е изчистено и доколко плана, не плана, а програмата за изграждане на батерии в България, което е много сериозен проект, в него може да се фиксира, че те могат да бъдат произвеждани или ще бъдат произвеждани основно в България. А по отношение върховенството на закона, дайте ни конкретен пример. Какво искате да видите накрая, когато теглим чертата, както казваме в България, за да не се стигне до спиране на средства за страната ни, например, както чухме вчера, че се върви в Унгария. Благодаря ви. Thank you so much. Indeed, on these two topics, the plan is really good. Um, if you, it's one of the most green plans that we have uh, in the European Union, and I think it's now the 23rd plan that um, the Commission is approving, with 60% of the plan going into uh, the European Green Deal, with all the topics I've just been um, describing. So very important is you have a trajectory to cut greenhouse gas emissions by 40% by 2025. This is very ambitious, but it's also very necessary, so congratulations on that. You triple power generation from renewables by 2026, and uh, you have a phase-out coal-powered plants by 2038. So there's a real structure, real plan behind it to cut emissions on one hand and on the other hand to invest heavily into renewables and of course the storage capacities, the battery capacities that are so important. I was mentioning also the interconnections that in my uh, view are very important because you have to diversify um, the possibility to have access for example to pipeline gas, a very important topic. So it's one of the most ambitious plans we have uh, what the European Green Deal is concerned. The second part of your questions is um, indeed you address two of the main major topics that are necessary in the CVM, for example. This is a big step forward. Uh, there's the reform of the Anti-Corruption Commission is one big pillar that is important and the other important pillar is the accountability of the Prosecutor General. So two big required reform steps within the CVM, so a big step forward also to achieve your goals. Виктор Иванов, 24 часа. Госпожа фон дер Лайн, въпросът ми е към вас. Еврокомисията подкрепя ли закриването на специализираното правосъдие, което беше създадено в България именно по предложение на комисията в механизма за сътрудничество и оценка? И също така, бихте ли казали дали е имало предварителни условия от Европейската комисия относно главния прокурор и неговата роля в българското правосъдие? So there's a very clear plan and goals described in uh, the RRP what this topic is concerned. 
Um, the, the main overarching headline here is accountability. And this is in every system important that there are checks and balances. With power, accountability has to go hand in hand. These are the reform steps that are necessary and that are laid down in the plan explicitly. Маргарита Колева, Дарик Радио. Госпожа фон дер Лайн, бихте ли ни казали каква ще бъде разплощателната валута между Европейския съюз и Русия и какви са шансовете Европейския съюз да запази позициите на еврото в този сток обмен? И към вас, господин премьер, един въпрос. Кога можем да очакваме реална енергийна независимост за България от Русия? Бихте ли посочили срок или период? Благодаря ви. So, I assume your question was concerning the uh, request from Russia to pay in rubles. Did I get it right? Yeah. Um, indeed, important is how the contracts are. And the contracts are very clear. The contracts say, contracts say the payment has to be either in euros, here, for example, in the European Union, or in dollars. Um, right now, we are looking very intensively at the decree, but at first sight, it is very clear that we stick to the contracts, and this recommends uh, and is set, uh, laid out very clearly that the payments will be in euros and in dollars and not in rubles. Um, I think it is very important um, that we have a clear analysis of the presidential decree that was issued a few days ago. That's the process we are in, and as uh, long as we have not um, uh, set the common position of the European Union, rest assured, contracts have to be followed, and a contract is in euro and in dollar. The diversification of energy sources and the independence of Bulgaria from Russia както и диверсификацията, да нямаме зависимост от който и да било, този план ни дава една голяма стъпка напред. Инвестирайки толкова много в възобновяеми източници на енергия, заедно с този батериен комплекс, който ще бъде в България, реално ние използваме нашата си енергия, произведена в България, за нашите цели. Едновременно с това, отключвайки потенциала на геотермалите. Ние всички българите знаем, че имаме, може би, на квадратен метър най-много минерални извори. Ако ги обърнем тях в електроенергия, тя е чиста, тя е непрекъсната и тя е българска. Едновременно с това, знаете, аз не веднъж съм дал а, интервюта по темата, очакваме до края на юни гръцката връзка да бъде финализирана, където да имаме и диверсификация на газа. Така че този план плюс гръцката връзка ще ни даде една огромна независимост, която никога България до този момент не е имала, което ще ни направи и с, с пълната възможност да контролираме а, нашата економика и нашата съдба. Благодаря. Колеги, последен въпрос за Добромир Николов, нова телевизия. Господин премьер, въпросът е свързан с а, това, че миналата година имаше заложени средства в а, бюджета за тази година от а, плана. На фона на тази инфлация, която се случва, ще има ли някакви средства, които ще се опитате да използвате още повече вчера, пък вице-премьер Асен Василев коментира, че се готвят някакви планове. Има ли как да вземете пари от този план и да ги използвате срещу инфлацията? Да, благодаря. Значи, министъра на финансите и вице-премьера Асен Василев вчера ясно каза, че още от днес ние започваме да работиме по плана. Ние ще прифинансираме средства, така че да не се бавиме нито ден, за да може да използваме всеки момент, да може този план да бъде реализиран. Това означава, че реално първите средства, които ние ще финансираме по тези проекти, ще бъдат отутре. След това очакваме съвсем скоро време а, от Европейската комисия и а, ЕКОФИН, събранието на финансовите министри в Европа, да, фин, да авторизират самите плащания, и реалните пари от плана да бъдат в, към края на лятото, вече да пристигат в България. Но тук, както а, госпожа фон дер Лейн каза, а, пътят е първа започва. Тези реформи, които сме обещали, трябва да ги изпълним. Те не са просто на хартия, 
Те не са просто обещания. Те са реални задачи, които трябва да бъдат изпълнени. И всички ние трябва да се объединим. Тези реформи са нужни и без този план. А този план ни дава допълнителния стимул това да се направи. Особено за възможността никой да не е над закона и главният прокурор да има контрол върху него, а не само Господ да е върху, него, върху неговите действия. Този план ни дава реалния стимул с този механизъм, който описахме, плюс антикорупционната комисия, България да стане една прозрачна, една правова държава, която всички ние си мечтаем. Благодаря ви, колеги. I think um, a final answer Please. Um, is, is uh, um, absolutely I, what this plan, the, the plan is outstanding. Um, what the milestones and targets are concerned for all the member states, perhaps it's necessary to explain that for all the member states, uh, we agreed at this big 800 billion next generation EU plan under two conditions. There is investment but the investment has to come with reform. And um, we look at the reform necessities in the so-called European semester, which is a process where the European Commission looks over years, since years, in depth in the different member states, what is the main requirement for reform. And therefore, every member state has to fulfill specific reforms tailor-made reforms for the member state, and of course the investment. And here the reforms are as we have described. So like in every other member state, you deliver the reform, there is the disbursement of money. It's like a good contract. And um, as, as you mentioned the different topics here, it is important um, that indeed uh, the, the reforms are done and it is important that the contracts are served. And we have discussed all these topics together. Um, I wanted to commend Bulgaria um, finally not only what the refugees are concerned but also I want to commend you in all the support that it is here uh, in the region what our um, good neighborly um, conditions are concerned. And here I think it is also important to have a clear approach uh, to the tasks ahead of us. I want to remind all of us that in 2020, 2020, the European Council took a major decision to step forward and to say, now it's time and we promise to start negotiations, accession negotiations with North Macedonia and Albania. The European Council concluded on that. This is a binding word. And I think it's now important that we deliver together. And for you, I want to say very clearly, the topic of protecting minorities is a core value of the European Union. It's a core value. It's an Article 2 of our treaties, very prominent. So yes, this is an important topic. It is being taken care of in the process. And I think it is important now that we deliver on our promise in these difficult times towards our neighbors. These times are very special and very difficult and very turbulent. And they will determine the future of Europe. Nothing will be the same anymore as it was before the war, after the war. And to keep promises to our friends and partners who count on us is very important. Therefore, I count on Bulgaria that you will skillfully steer the process and I know that you're able to do that. Many thanks for hosting me here today. It has been a very good experience. I'm looking forward now to see the university. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you again.